Mm -hmm. That would be a good thing to do. There we go. Now that we've got it, the recording and transcription are started. Thank you very much. And hi, everyone. Um, it's been a while for me. I haven't attended and I haven't been able to be much part of the DSC community calls for the last, I don't know, few times that it happened. Um, but uh, um, we'll be, I will have more time available at least after PSConf for you, which is going to be next month. But today we're going to wing something up. And the good thing is, thanks to Demetrius, we've got things to talk about. So we'll go through quickly what's going on. And then if you have any questions, as usual, we're just going to open it up. So what's going on? As usual, community calls are about every six weeks. Sessions from the community. So if you have anything you want to talk about, feel free. Questions and community release updates, if any. And um, on weekend, uh, yeah, we can discuss about pretty much anything DSC related, sometimes just PowerShell related, and that's good. So the next call should be the 10th of July. Usually we do a break around July. I'm not sure I would be in the country in July. So probably best to skip that one. So just as a reminder, I've just looked at the dates and then I've uh, listed them for uh, 2024 until the end of the year. So there's one landing on December 25th. So sorry, but this one won't happen. We're just going to scratch that and save it for uh, 2025. So in the meantime, there's three left, one in August, end of August. So that's going to be a light one because it's still going to be summer. And then October 2nd, November 13th. And we will try. I already have some ideas of some content for one of those. And I will ask someone to come. And you know, knows already. He was not available today. Um, but uh, we have some content that can be, you know, presented. But if you have anything, please, please, please tell us. And I've also updated. Oh, no, that's another one. I've also updated the DSC community call um, session eyes. So then you can say, hey, I have a small subject or topics I'd like to talk about. You can submit that and we will tell you is next session is okay or something like that. And then we can just plan it. So very quick updates on the news. It was the PowerShell DevOps Global Summit not long ago. And then they already announced next year's, which is good because it doesn't land on a scholarly day. So I will probably be there next year. And uh, who's in this call, has, who has been to the uh, PowerShell and DevOps Global Summit last month? Was it last month? May? Yeah, last month. Can you just raise your hands up? Yeah, one. Only one? One. We know that many. Okay. Two? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's a few people. I really recommend going to the, like, if it's close to you, I really recommend going. Usually you meet very nice people and uh, you learn a lot about the technology and everything that's happening. So uh, please go, and especially if you go, if you're in Europe, there's PSCon for you next month. I have to say it because I organize it. So I'm I'm biased a little bit. But uh, um, the recordings for the PowerShell DevOps summits, oopsie, uh, are already up. At least some of them. I haven't checked if everything is out. But here's the link. I will drop the link in the chat. Right now, no, I won't do that right now because I can't I'll, use I'll PowerPoint. Grab it yeah, I'll do that. I'll drop it later otherwise. But uh, but go uh, have a look at the sessions. There's a few sessions on writing DSC resource. If you remember, I haven't watched them yet, but I, I've added to my uh, to watch list. And I can turn on the light. It's getting late, but oh, that's too bright. Nah, this is a bad idea. Sorry, I'll stay in the dark. It's too late here. And um, today we have Dimitrius ready to talk about open sourcing some DSC resources from the Wingate team. Uh-huh, interesting. And after that, we'll do like a few, you know, run table if you have any questions, things you'd like to, to ask or you'd like to discuss uh, during the next one of content you'd like to, to hear about, let us know. So Demetrius, take it away. And what do you have to announce? You bet. Thanks, Gail. So we've been doing quite a bit of work behind the scenes with Wingate to act as a local configuration manager and handle some of the orchestration for Wingate configuration files. We went out to GitHub looking at several of the top languages and repositories 
And just generally, we've identified several resources that we wanted to be able to have, and we needed a way to get those built quickly and get them out. We've been using this repository for a while as a kind of a, an incubation place to go in. So if you go into that resources directory, you'll see the Git resource, the Windows developer resource, and a few others in there that we've been incubating. We're going to continue doing that with some, um, you can see the Windows setting accessibility module. We're gonna go ahead and do all of the Windows settings, and we're also gonna do the work with the export experimental feature in Winget to be able to capture those settings. So this was just a place to get things out there. I think several of them like um, Python, PIP3, Yarn, Git, those will likely eventually move to the DSC community, but we wanna do those correctly. And there's a little bit more rigor around getting that set up and handing it off to the community than just throwing a couple of files out there. So we wanna do that. But the goal really was get these things open so that people can see them, people can contribute to them. And, and I plan on using this repository as a place to channel some activity and kind of focus energy and helping to work through some of the challenges that we have related to discoverability for DSC resources, as well as identifying some patterns and practices for common things like modifying registry keys and understanding when you might need to do something like restart Explorer to get dark mode to apply or start an application after you've modified some registry keys. So we've got several people that have been contributing to these and we're going to continue trying to con keep everything open and transparent and absolutely love your feedback. Um, we also have another link that is uh, a short one that goes into Dev Home for samples that we provide for some of these resources. And um, that that link, I'll put it in the chat. It's akamsdsc.yaml. And that's another area where I think you know, having some practical examples and things from the community is really helpful. We identified the Windows optional features because they're being called by the DISM APIs. If you try to use invoke DSC resource in packaged PowerShell, you'll get an exception. The same thing will happen if you call it through Winget. But if you have unpackaged PowerShell, you can use get Winget configuration and pipe that to invoke. It's DSC.yaml. And you know we're welcoming people to submit samples. Um, this one is kind of broken down into repositories is GitHub projects that we've built configurations for. The DSC resources folder is just examples for individual resources. We've got some that we're looking at for um, learn to code templates, getting things set up for people that are learning to code. And we've also got a few folks that have been doing some work building configurations for how they like their environment set up. Um, Clint Rutkus on the Power Toys team has one. I've got one. Um, I know there were a couple that were built for the Microsoft Build Conference by some folks doing some AI work and some folks in the Microsoft DevBox team that does work with DevDiv. So we've really been busy evangelizing this as the, the way forward for Windows configuration to really identify all the gaps in the things that are missing and things that the community wants. So this is really just more transparency on what we're doing and what we want to be able to get feedback from. Amazing. Um, can you just remind everyone where you're at with Winget and Winget Configure and you know what's um, what things you're doing, what's the focus at the moment, if you have anything in the roadmap, you know, what are you doing on, I don't know, workstation to start with and then take it from there? Sure, so the, the Winget configuration, um, you know, really was targeted primarily as a kind of a developer aimed scenario for doing things like setting up your projects. But we're very aware of sort of IT pro and governance types of concerns those really come into play when you're trying to manage configurations and, and do some of those more advanced things. So we're making some additional investments, working with PowerShell team on things like standing up a private gallery, improving the Winget sources. We wanna have some mappings in Winget manifests so that you can identify DSC resources that link to 
Wingate packages and samples for how the export flow would function. And we are in box right now with the server vnext previews. So Wingate will be part of server as a um, kind of an orchestration for applying these kinds of configurations. And we're also looking at some other things for challenges working in system context and what happens is with a lot of MSIX applications and how those get provisioned. Um, so really, you know, there's there's definitely an ocean to boil out there in terms of configuration of as code and infrastructure as code. And we're trying to prioritize the things where we get customer feedback to make sure that we're building those things first and addressing things like, hey, how are we going to reason about, um, you know, package level dependencies when we're trying to do an export to get you a, you know, local to cloud configuration or how are we going to handle these complex scenarios where I want to run a single configuration file? I've got an application like Spotify or Postman that prohibits elevation. I've got other things that require elevation. Can we have it where you get a single UAC where you can tell Winget it's okay to elevate for the whole configuration, but we only run those resources elevated that have been decorated for that and vice versa. If you ran a configuration elevated, can I identify the, the user account and de-elevate to run the things that require not being elevated? So there's quite a bit of complexity there as well, but we're absolutely looking for the feedback from the community and to partner with everybody on how we grow this ecosystem. And definitely one of the other big priorities we're looking at coming up in the next couple of months is getting a preview in Winget where we can use the new DSC.exe for V3 where you don't even have to have PowerShell modules that you're pulling down. You really just define those get, set, and test interfaces in your application in that application's native language. So once you've installed the application, you already have the sort of the logical resources there to be able to configure them. So you said that, um, so it's going to be there on server, right? So what is the kind of a workflow, what kind of a usage you're thinking of just on servers? The same as setting up a server as we used to do in the old DSC way? Um, I, you know, I don't know enough about how many of the resources are binary and are not going to work through Invoke DSC resource. I know there's been a lot of friction between how we go from a world where Windows PowerShell is baked into server and desktop and PowerShell 7 is not, and we want to be able to move quickly with PowerShell 7 out of box, and we want to move quickly with building these resources and getting the tools into developers' hands. So again, I think it's going to be you know, customer or partner feedback, letting us know what scenarios you've got and what you're looking for for us to make sure we can support those flows and those scenarios. Um, you know, I get quite a bit of feedback from developers that are saying, hey, I develop applications that run on servers, so I want to use server as my dev box, and I want to be able to configure it with, you know, Winget and these tools. I've got other people that are saying kind of the opposite, where they're saying, hey, I want server absolutely locked down. I want to be able to absolutely control everything, including the full provenance of where everything comes from. So in a world like that, we're going to be looking at um, policy improvements. We're going to be looking at, hey, I want to lock Winget down. I want to lock PowerShell down. I want to guarantee I know where every one of these installers is coming from. I want to know end to end all of these resources have been approved and they're coming from, you know, the the ACR or the Azure Container Registry and you know really have that picture of i can be in a completely controlled environment but i get the convenience of all of this tooling right out of the box so that's another area where we'll be looking for feedback that's cool so there's a few questions in the chat that i'm going to bring to you so mm -hmm. um some people ask well you saying that winget is going to be in the next release of windows server but we can't get powershell 7 to be in box so so what did you manage to do there and why you can do this and the PowerShell team cannot go in box? So I know the work on server has been incremental and a lot of this was motivated by customer feedback that the desktop experience in Windows Server has really lagged behind the sort of Windows client operating system. 
And one of the top asks there was for Winget as a package manager. Another one was Windows Terminal to give you the better experiences in the terminal. But since PowerShell 7 isn't something that ships in the operating system, but Winget and Windows Terminal are, those were included in the server and setter preview. But once you've got Winget on the box, it is super easy to get PowerShell 7 bootstrapped and go from there. So I think there's going to be additional time where we have some of these, what I would call chicken and egg scenarios where, you know, hey, I want to run the PowerShell flavor for Winget configuration, but I need PowerShell 7 for that and it's not there. So I can't today build a Winget configuration that I can run through that out of box desktop experience on server. There will still be some bootstrapping, but we're working through trying to identify those gaps and hoping to get to a world where I can just run a Winget configuration and I can include PowerShell 7 as a part of that, or at least initially in the bootstrapping, I don't have to manually go get PowerShell 7. So it's good to remind people that the main issue with PowerShell is the uh, .NET runtime uh, support um, window, which is much bigger than the, well, which is much smaller than what uh, uh, Windows requires. So that's one of the reasons they can't be in box. So what they're just trying to do is make it easier to install on any machine. And I guess Winget is one of the ways that makes it, or that, at least the work, the effort is going to to make it easier. So if you have Winget to do a Winget install PowerShell or something like that. And then yes, customers are still not allowed to install out of box content often. Well, I always say, yeah, and it's sad, but it's true. If you can't install something, then you know, it's probably the first issue is finding why you can't install something. But I agree that yeah, there's a lot of. Um, uh, a lot of challenges in getting some software approved and then having this into a, a repository of some sorts that you trust and then you can install from there. Yes. So there's another question, which is, what is the difference between Winget configuration and DSCV3 or are they the same thing? Great question. Oh, so, question. yeah, so I, I would say logically, if you look at Winget configuration, this is really Winget acting as an orchestrator to apply a, a broader scoped configuration based on a YAML file. And today, Winget is calling the PowerShell DSC v2 methods underneath, like invoke DSC resource. When we talk about DSC v3, we're really moving, I would say, a broader scope than just PowerShell DSC, but we're using those same idioms or interfaces to handle configuration. So I would say this is really looking more like the future of Windows software configuration and configuration for the operating system. But it's gonna be very long lead time, lots of heavy lifting for applications written in any language to be able to expose those configuration interfaces that the dsc.exe orchestrator can call to configure a single resource or a or a single applications interfaces and then winget will still be able to do that overall orchestration and may be able to do some optimizations when we know that it's something like we're installing several packages we may be able to go ahead and do parallel downloads to save you some of that linear time so that you're not going through a download install sequential process. And we'll be looking at other optimizations like that as well. But right now there aren't any packages other than some samples that support these new V3 interfaces. So we're gonna be exposing the ability in Winget as an experimental feature to be able to call dsc.exe to affect these new configuration interfaces. And then we'll start working through some of our developer specific tooling like Winget, um, Power Toys, Dev Home, Windows Terminal to start exposing those interfaces as reference examples. And as we work through some of those challenges, then we'll reach out to the broader ecosystem. So um, thank you. I have a quick question to jump back on the server side of things. I think you mentioned quickly that uh, you need to have the desktop experience to uh, to have the Winget configure available so the, on the machine? 
So the desktop experience is where things essentially just work. We did have a community member figured out what was going on for server core. Um, it was actually an issue where Winget, when you don't give it any settings, it's going to default to the locale for the account that's logged in. And when you have server core, there is no desktop. So the particular API that we were calling wasn't present. But you can go into your Winget settings. You can specify a default locale. And then that will enable Winget to work on server core. We still have some work to make sure that we're doing the right things to check to see if we're in the desktop experience and default to um, some other locale if none is specified in our settings. And then that would essentially unblock things for Winget on server core. But when we're looking at all of the resources that are out there and even Winget itself, how it defaults to silent with progress, we're still going to be in a world where it's possible you might be calling an installer through the Winget DSC resource that wants to pop up just a progress type of a, a UX. I expect something like that would probably fail or throw an exception. So we will have some additional work that we need to think about when we're trying to plumb this through end to end. And certainly any DSC resources that you're calling through Winget on server core are going to have to be either able to be parameterized so you can say no UI or at least be able to return an appropriate exception so you can try to go troubleshoot. Um, and the other one I'll call out is the, the Windows optional features um, is a great example where when you're depending on some other underlying modules, if those things are going through APIs or if they make any calls to anything in the shell, you do not have that shell experience on server core. Okay, or the shell. Ah, okay. Yeah, that would be interesting to to see. To see. But yeah, but a lot of the things that you mentioned make sense to have it anyway on server core. So if you have any GUI to install any software, that just wouldn't work, you know, or stuff like that. So yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. So is it something that you plan on improving the support for, or is it just like tell us and and we'll see based on the feedback? Um, I, I think right now we're going to prioritize the work based on feedback, but my my broader vision is really that we're able to configure anything and that resources have affordances to do things like inform you about elevation requirements they may have, about any UI requirements they have, um, you know, and, and so I'm I'm thinking about these things in terms of classes of problems to solve so that we can go in and address them by adding extra optional decorations to resources so that over the fullness of time, we can continue using the resources we have today, but they can just get smarter. And eventually you'll be able to have some kind of a mechanism to query a resource to be able to have it tell you that it got all the information that is optional that you would want to make it easier for you to be successful in doing a thing like taking a configuration that was built for desktop for some sort of user scenario and being able just to go probe it on server and say, hey, is this going to work here or not? You know, in the case of Winget generically, the majority of them, you should just be able to say, hey, take all of these defaults and change them all to silent install, which means no UI. And as long as the manifests at Winget are properly decorated and the resources decorated, that would be a thing that could happen. Um, but a lot of that falls into the work of how much effort and, and investment do we want to make in transitioning or rebuilding resources or having graceful migration tools to do this versus do we want to have this just baked into the product? And that's where it's going to be a function of adoption. If we see a lot of people embrace and adopt this, we'll be able to say, hey, we've got a lot of good traction. We should invest more engineering effort into this. Um, you know, honestly, if it's just some niche scenarios and it's primarily just developers doing things on Windows desktop, that's going to deprioritize some of that work on server. So if these are things you want, these are things that we need to hear about. Okay, thanks. Um, so uh, so uh, I had a question it just slipped my mind. Um, so D yes, so the DSC... Um, so the Winget, so the Winget configure. So 
if we have the DSC community resources that are all a script based resource, do you think they would just work? Like, obviously, I got, um, if the APIs are present on the server core, but would they just run in WinGet configure? Do you think? Yes. They just like if it's script resource, they don't call APIs that are not on server core. They just call the standard API that would work. Yes, I have not run into any outliers for that where there weren't already some sort of a known edge case. I've I've had a lot of good success. I did a, a video a few months ago on um, one of the insider builds of server. I had literally not tested anything before, and I just started going down and just trying things with Winget to see what would happen. And I was delighted at how many things just worked, how graceful everything was. And in terms of configuration, everything that had worked on um, desktop succeeded. Uh, I didn't even realize that the the developer mode Windows setting was also present on server, and it just worked as expected. And that was just a, hey, I'm going to go product truth and see what happens here. And I was absolutely thrilled that everything I happened to run into just worked. Nice. So, so the follow-up question, and that's the trick question. Do you know, or do you think there's any work done on a file resource, uh, a file file DSC resource? Because the file resource is the most is binary, famous yep. binary one. Yes. Yep. I've had some discussions with Michael and Steve about that. Um, I will. I will say I don't know yet where we're going to land with it, but if it comes down to it, and I'll say the same thing for the DISM resource. You may see a new module show up in this Winget DSC repository. That is the at least we're going to unblock those critical things that we need. Okay. They may be experimental. They may get published as alpha, you know, get killed or redone or whatever. But where there's real business value in solving problems we have today, that's why we opened up this repository so we can get going and unblock some of these scenarios and figure out how often they're being used. Um, you know, another thing that I'll call out um, in the in the Winget product, we do have some telemetry that we can use for trying to improve the product. You can absolutely disable that in the Winget settings. We honor the window settings for that as well. But one of the things that we're passing through related to configuration is a SHA-256 hash of the configuration file that's being run. I don't care what's in your configuration file. I don't care what the resources or settings are. I'm just trying to understand, do I see one device running a whole bunch of different configurations? Or do I see a bunch of devices running some identical configuration? Um, that's That information is also very helpful for me to understand some of these usage patterns. You know, just because I see lots and lots of people, you know, running Winget and running Upgrade All every day, um, you know, that type of a measure for me is a real good metric on product usage and kind of represents some business value. When we get into Winget configuration, it's a very different picture. You might just run the configuration one time, get that server set up, and you may never run it again for the life of that server. Or you might run it every six or eight months or whenever you reset it. We don't know what those real usage patterns are, so I'm just trying to understand those um, as they are today. But that's going to be another one of those things where if you can share your specific business scenarios with me, that helps me to explain the value proposition back to leadership here, make sure that we continue funding the investments in those areas. Is there any plan for like an orchestration of the Winget Configure? Because Winget Configure is a bit like the LCM that we had that was just executing the configuration. Is there any orchestration of that configuration or is there any plan for anything like that? Right now, not in Winget itself. Um, we've definitely been having some discussions about, hey, um, should we think in terms of having a service that acts more like the LCMs that are on Windows Server, where you can either periodically have it automatically run and tell you if there's been any drift or periodically enforce compliance by reapplying the configuration, you know, those are definitely some valuable scenarios, but they're not really what we're going after with the with the Winget side of things. Um, but if that's something that you see a lot of value in, let us know. We're happy to continue those discussions with the PowerShell team. We're working very closely with them and trying to kind of balance the, um, you know, the needs and the wants of the community in terms of the, the business scenario with the, you know, 
hey, I would like it to be in product X or product Y, or I would like it to operate like this for some reasons. You know, everybody's got lovely different opinions. You know, people would still love me to produce a supported version of Winget that's just an XE that doesn't even run in package context. Lots of reasons why that's not already a thing. Um, you know, we've had some people that have said, hey, I would rather Winget ran as a system service that I can start and stop and run and interface directly with rather than the COM APIs. You know, I think in the fullness of time, anything is possible, but it's really going to run, you know, run down into where are we adding the most value? And that's really where we want to go focus. And I think the migration of, you know, all of the investments that people have made either in PowerShell scripting to build an environment or, you know, earlier versions of DSC or any other orchestration tool out there, you know, regardless of, you know, Chef, Puppet, Terraform, Ansible, whatever, you know, a lot of the reasons that we invested in PowerShell DSC is because it's reasonably interoperable. And with the nature of the community that's already been built around it, we've already got a lot of momentum. So, you know, this is just kind of, in, in my mind, this is really us kind of doubling down on what we have that we believe is a good investment. And, you know, we have a, a whole generation of developers that we're going to have to educate about what is configuration as code, what is infrastructure as code, and we'll have a lot of work to do, work on building the tooling. Um, if you saw the session at Microsoft Build uh, that Kayla and Charlotte did on Dev Home, we already have a UI that you can walk through where you can click some apps and packages, you can specify GitHub repositories, and then at the end of it, you can click a button to generate that configuration file. And then you can go in from there and go modify it by hand or do whatever you want to do with it. So that's another sort of a convenience in terms of sourcing applications and projects for developer scenarios. But it's not going to do anything when you think of like, you know, a Microsoft 365 or an IIS or a SQL Server kind of a configuration. And would love to get some feedback on what other kind of tooling you think would be helpful to have to help you build or audit these configurations. Great. Just a quick message. You can, you know, type your questions or just raise your hands if you want to take the microphone. It's not just me asking questions. I just happen to have loads. So uh, my next question was, so you mentioned you're working closely with the PowerShell team. Uh, do you also work and do you sync with the uh, guest configuration team, the machine configuration team, sorry? Um, I've had some interactions with them, but not as many as I've had with PowerShell and with some of the other teams that are looking to leverage what we're building. Um, I've had plenty of discussions with um, DevDiv in terms of um, IDEs and tooling and configuring Microsoft DevBox. I've had plenty of discussions with the Azure Virtual Desktop team in terms of some ideas on how we can offer customized images or make it easier to um, not only source, you know, apps and packages, but also define configurations to be applied to those environments. Um, you know, but I'm happy if there's something you think that we should be looking at with guest configuration team again, you know, you know, GitHub issue or email me or whatever, get my attention, let me know so I can go have those discussions. I just wanted to see if there's anything going on, but anyway, you you said you spoke to uh, Michael, so Michael's pretty much on the like very close, I think, to the machine configuration team, so that's probably not an issue. Um, and unfortunately, um, the machine configuration folks couldn't make it today, but we'll try to get them next time. Oh, then, you know, catch up. And there's a there's a conference next month that you're going to as well, right? Yeah, there's uh, there's this little conference in Europe that happens every year, and I'm hoping to yeah. be a uh, quasi permanent fixture. So <laughs> I'm absolutely looking forward to the trip to Antwerp, and I will be covering a little bit more about Winget configuration and some of the other investments that we've been making in unblocking some of the scenarios with PowerShell. So there will be some good examples, and I'll be making sure all those are checked in open source so that you'll be able to go kick the tires on all of those. And it won't just be the, you know, magical unicorn happy path. I'm going to be calling out some of the warts and some of the challenges where I see things that you can work around, some things that you might not be able to work around and uh, where you can yell at us to tell us what else we need to do to unblock your scenarios. 
Yeah, and there will be also Steve uh, there showing DSCV3. Um, he's got, I think, a pretty long session, like to just go really deep dive into DSCV3, telling you know what what's happening, what's going on, what's the work, what's the focus. And there's also all the other uh, PowerShell team members coming, so Steve, Amber, Damia. Steve and Alex, there's machine configuration folks. The Mutem is coming his first time, so we'll make sure to make a, a great uh, um, welcome to him. And then, yeah, there's plenty of sessions, and it's going to be very soon. And I'm a bit stressed because got still a lot of things to plan, but it's going to be fun. So many people coming. Um, is there any other question in the chat for Dimitrius while he's around? Give you you can raise your hand, you can just unmute and then say something. Say, I want DSC, I want Winget, I want Winget on on I want Winget configure on Linux. So I've actually been talking to Craig Lowen about what that might look like. <laughs> my, <knew> uh, would. <laughs> my anecdotal example is hey, I'm a, an AI developer, I want to do TensorFlow, I need WSL, I need a Linux distro, I need hardware GPU acceleration or potentially hardware NPU acceleration, and I don't want to have to do a Winget configuration and then go clone a dot .files directory and then go do something inside of WSL. So we've been talking about what it would look like in the world, especially with DSCV3, where I don't have as many of these binary complexities, but I could have a configuration that says, hey, I know that I need to be able to install some packages in my Linux distro after I've got it up and running. So I wanna be able to call the native Linux package manager using DSC and then have that same mechanism to configure those things in that environment. So, um, you know, I don't know what kind of traction we'll get there, but I think we will definitely try to figure out some kind of a proof of concept and get opinions from the Linux community. Um, one of the product managers in DevDev also, you know, gave me kind of an idea for some sugar syntax where I want to Winget configure and give it a URL. And I don't want to have to launch my browser to go copy and paste that long raw GitHub content URL. I just want to give you the name of my project and have Winget go figure out, is there a configuration file in the right directory? and go run that. So that's another one for, you know, doing a quick thumbs up. But in terms of infrastructure as code, that's a pretty easy way to say, hey, Winget configure, here's the repository. Winget, you go find that configuration file and apply it for me. Oh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> hey, plenty of things you can work on. That's great. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, is there any other question around? And and then I will already, I'm going to start, you know, what is the content you want to hear? Is that the kind of content you like? Do you want to hear more about Winget and Winget Configure, for instance? Do you want to hear more about DSCv3 or maybe machine configuration? If there's any area, or maybe uh, M365 DSC, you know, is there content you're really interested in? If there's something you want to talk about, if there's something you want to present, Drop it in the chat or just uh, let us know. I think I have a link somewhere. Let me stop sharing first. Uh, I almost quit the call because I the big red button was shutting at me. Interested in M365 and DSCV3. Okay. Good. Uh, where's the DSC community? Session eyes. All right. So if there's things you'd like to talk about, feel free to submit whatever subject you want. You don't have to put a big abstract. It's not a conference. It's just, you know, trying to organize things a little bit. So if there's anything you want to do, and then if there's dates you prefer to speak, you know, let us know. You've got the dates here for the remaining of the year. We'll try to be a bit more organized and start planning for 2025. So then we have all the dates available. And then you can just say, I'd like to speak on this date and I'd like to submit, you know, this idea. And sometimes you say, well, I'd like you to do a panel session with those people talking about those subjects. And then we'll try to make it happen. But, uh, but you see, like uh, I told Dimitrius probably about 
an hour ago. <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> yes, that's organization. Thank you very much again for coming. And thanks for the, the good news of open sourcing all of those things. There's a lot, there's a few repositories that we can go and explore. And then all of those DSC resources that uh, we are looking to see what we can do with. And obviously, these are just DSC resources. So if we want to use them in different contexts with different things, we can try and see if that works. And probably it will. It's just class-based resources. There's nothing extra than the existing things that we know already. So thank you again for that as well, for those, those contributions. All right, if there's no more questions or subject, uh, we'll, we will stop the recording and uh, we can stay around a little bit. And thank you, thank you again, Demetrius. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. You can stop you the recording now.